to try to move through this faster. Uh, I got a lot of stuff in here. And I'm going to tell you what's possible, and it'll be, it'll be a little bit like talking about um, voiceover network when Jeff first got involved. <laughs> it seemed impossible. But this stuff is speeds and speeds, and we're ready to do stuff. Okay, so uh, we are about to have blockchain based open source constituent identity. Uh, I call it VNS, voter uh, naming system, but without, uh, by masking, okay, we'll talk about that means. Uh, the problem also, or the opportunity is created by the parties have become like newspapers in 2016. They've lost all their readers. And there's no reason to go there anymore. Um, John Bosak, he was a chairman of the XML steering committee, said XML gives Java something to do, okay? Uh, masked constituent identity gives social something to do, and bots something to do. Uh, and also, as Jose de Castro said yesterday, this is the fourth industrial revenue, and you know, great young guy, says he's done three startups, only get, probably because he always says, let's get started. <laughs> Okay, uh, we look at politics and we look at governance, we say these are black boxes, they're impenetrable. They are. This is the policy development industry. It's an industry like any other. We in the web business disrupt industries before coffee. If we can see <laughs> politics and governance and regulation, this whole black box, as simply another industry that is ripe for disintermediation, we're on the right track. And then we just do what we normally do. The tools we always use, if we apply them here, will win. All right. Um, this is a quote from White Paper. The supply side of the policy development B2B market comprises 535 vendors who office rent free on Capitol Hill and ignore the landlords. Mm. Uniquely in industry, this special class of vendors is forced to endure a full on proxy battle every two or six years. What vendors would do that? These people are really exposed to what we want. All right, uh, the structural issues is that the presumption in their infrastructure is there are two parties and one is ascendant. Uh, the Capitol building has these two lights, these two rotundas, okay? One is lit up all the time at night. That's because the Republicans are in power when this is taken, hmm. okay? This is a two-party system. It is not open to anything else. Why do we have 700,000 plus people uh, as a constituents for a congressman? It's because there's only 435 congressmen. Why is that? Because there's 435 seats. We couldn't have more congressmen. We only have 435 <laughs> seats. This is so fast backwards, it's unbelievable. So, but we can change it. Okay, the idea here is, you may know Phil Winley, uh, all the credentials you would need, probably my biggest tech advisor. Uh, it sounds arcane, but it's not going to be. Blockchain masked uh, voter naming system allows us, for the first time in history, to have political constituent power uh, without exposing my real name and address. In the age of Gamergate and dudes packing heat to town halls, I don't necessarily want to expose uh, my name and address. Uh, so we can do all these things. The problem is where and how. Okay. And this, all right. Uh, social is, oh, that's good. <laughs> Social is affection based. Discord is not discourse. The whole political party system has convinced everybody you have to argue in order to make a point. But the parties have lost their sway. And we can teach ourselves and our friends how to do this. So why not form fan clubs online? Okay, friends, allies, and neighbors. I want to point out that neighbors are not necessarily your friends. Mm -hmm. But the point is that we can have a conversation. And if you form a fan club around your politician, they're going to pay attention. Okay, um, the, the uh, agreement <coughs> with us to crowdsource policy and we'll have a reason to reelect you. Again, the problem is where and how. There's a lot of platitudes around this idea, oh, we can change government, yeah, yeah, but what do I do tomorrow that I can actually do? This is great. <laughs> now it pros again. I'm sorry? Tap on the left column. Hello. There you go. Okay. All right. So uh, this is a little busy, but the idea here is my daughter and two wonderful grandkids live in San Jose. Right out here. 
I'm not necessarily interested in having everybody in the world know where they live, all right? But a trusted identity process can view their address without exposing it, resolve that to a latitude and longitude, compare that latitude and longitude to all of the political jurisdictions of the United States, and you discover that this is a Venn polygon. It's the overlap of all these jurisdictions. And that takes a moment to do. We, we, we mapped all the jurisdictions. There's about 51,238 of them. The United States and the state down the Unified School District. And we have mapped 540,185 um, power zones, which is these imaginary polygons. It's just faster for us to do that. But what's interesting is that it resolves to a string we can use, or we can get more detail. This is the power zone for California, uh, 19th Congressional District, 15th State Senate District, 27th State Assembly District. Uh, this is the census.gov code for San Jose and 3rd Congressional District. Knowing all those things and the counties involved in those, these are the people who work for this district. Now, do you believe that they care? <coughs> they care immensely. Okay, the solution now is crowdsource the solution. In other words, subject matter experts get together. They say, okay, let's start with this. Okay, so they put out some general things, use the GitHub API, and start iterating. And you end up with a law out of that process. Using the GitHub API, it has right there in the GitHub API. People are already drafting laws, but you have to go to GitHub. Using the API, you can just do it in groups. Okay, and then you draft the fixers, and the fixers are the people who live in that jurisdiction. So, um, who, okay, you have two senators and one congressman. On some issue on which one of your politicians, let's say, is the chairman or ranking member of a committee, you have probably 500 times as much influence over that committee's business as the average voter. So if I care, if it's immigration, if I care about immigration and my system knows, walks my social graph and says, hey, uh, I know you care about immigration as I do, but did you know you have 500 times the power? I do, would you be the tip of our spear? Right. And so by finding those people, it's a straightforward workflow, but it's an invitation. I think if I found out I had 500 times the influence, I'm likely to click the link, okay? So here are all these individuals who can, you can target the people uh, the representatives who actually drive something through a committee. Okay, um, this has been done many times. Uh, they really <coughs> value constituents, they don't hear from constituents. A politician is like the beautiful girl in high school, nobody calls her date because they assume she's going with a team captain. Okay, all right, gesture based constituent power. Don't ask somebody to do something they don't already do. Mm. Okay. If we know somebody's power zone or whatever code you want to use, the magic string, we now know who they have influence over, okay? If we know that and they happen to use an issue tag, this is a real screenshot. Um, we can capture that coincidence of ge geography and hashtag and start putting icons up on the politician's map. <laughs> and then you can drill down from there you can send, use that to send a fax to notify the politician, you can send a postcard, a FedEx packet. Uh, there's a mechanism now to route around um, their web forms, because none of these people have emails, because they don't want to hear from you. But Sunlight Foundation has put together um, a way to route around that. And a lot of other, this is a cascade. Now if you add these things up, suddenly the politician says, what is going on out there? And they can't control it through their memory hole, because we're publishing this and as the ages, not us. Anybody can use these tools, all right? We happen to have a solution, but that doesn't mean that's the only solution. Anybody can use these tools, and that's what we want to promote. Hey, Brent? Yes. So I've tried to reach congressmen who aren't my guys that are on the committees. Why bother? And I've, I've discovered, well, besides the why bother, I've discovered that, that there was one universal website built that they all use where I'm not allowed to reach them because I'm not their constituents. It, is your workaround solve that problem for you? Yes. Me? Okay. <coughs> we can talk about that later. There's a lot, <clears throat> a lot of follow-up here, but if you, if any of you, 
all these conversations, have you ever noticed all these conversations, we have to change this, and it's about policy. Now the secret in social media too, you cannot imagine how important as a constituent you are to these politicians. So it's interesting that if they know you're a constituent, even though it's just a set of fingers on a keyboard that's been attested to by a trusted third party, they're gonna start paying attention to that. And if they see 20 different constituents showing up on their map from gestures you're doing anyway, all right, there is somebody in that office that's pounding on the desk and we have to pay attention to these people. Okay. So let me convert this into what I think it is. Okay. So if you're pitching, if, if V Engine's not you, it's somebody else? That's me. Okay, All right, so V Engine's comparing it or you're saying you're gonna sit inside Medium or you are your own blogging environment? Uh, we are the own, we just stole the Medium look and feel. Okay, all right, so you're a Medium clone, right? But what the positioning is that, uh, well Medium does offer some form of distribution yeah. within its world, that's obviously their strategy. You're saying you're going to bake in this blockchain-based anonymous social capability, which that standard of that blockchain mm -hmm. stuff could then be used for politics and other kind of things. Right. Right. Okay. To prove your constituent without exposing them, and we only this is a uh, a demonstration and necessary. Remember that that thing about <coughs> we have this problem. Yeah. You know, how and where. Okay. Hello. No. This is just going lovely. <laughs> Must be Trump trying to silence you. That's a weird one. Did it? Just, did the screen go blank, or did? I don't it just know. lost the signal. They're 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 it's back. back. They're back. Oh, see, so, so you take the microphone and you bang it. Very good idea. That's a feature of medium. Yeah. Okay, so this is just a way. Uh, we've created a mechanism where you set up a C name. We'll launch in about 30 seconds, maybe a minute, a complete soup to nuts, social networking, buzzword compliant groups engine on your site. Okay, that fast. You turn it off, change your scene, and you don't want to use it. Uh, but it's just that fast. Private groups, public groups, as I say, buzzword compliant. Okay, so this is just a setup. You've got to name something, you've got to have, okay. um, and this is just some UI stuff, so you know, it's not, I can show you all. Blah, 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 aren't we cool? <laughs> okay, but <clears throat> here's the real part. So if Jeff Pulver wants to have political clout, um, he can set up a C name, B-O-N, M-O-N, whatever it wants to be, and point it at this, and now he's got all these tools at von.jeffpulver.com, whatever you want it to be. Uh, we own a domain called govadvisors.us just because we want to be cute. But what it means is that we could set up, and, there's some typos in here, uh, in a minute, fda.govadvisors.us. There are people in the valley who care about the FDA. Elizabeth Holmes comes to mind. Mm. Okay. Uh, FCC.govadvisors.us. If I want to do the pulver order now, I want to do that. And then I would get all those constituents involved and uh, I believe that's straightforward. Immigration's a big deal in the Valley, often for the wrong reasons. Are, Sir? are your users, the anonymized users, are they global to the, to the API or are they specific to the, the, the site deployment? Well, if I... If I sign up anonymously on Jeff's C name. You know, pseudonymously, yeah, right. right. And then will my anonymized ID show up on fcc.vengine.io? If that's where you signed up, yes. No, I mean, if I sign up on oh, okay, and no, one no, domain, no, the, will it show yeah, up in another? No. Or do I need to sign up? No, we haven't done federation yet. We might discover that's smart. There's a lot of building out that wants to happen. We're just basically providing a context for it. What's the, what's the business model? You're going to charge a monthly for Jesus. someone like us to put it in my legal tool platform? Uh, pay monthly boy, I, I wish I'd figure that. You think after 10, you know, we've got over seven years and seven figures in this, and for our family, it's a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, it appears there are a lot of different hooks around here. If somebody wants to, I would hope in partnership, I mean, really, come on. Um, if you want to do voter lobby, dot, uh, ubervoter.us, okay? Remember somebody reached out to me? Why not be like an Uber? Okay, I'm a constituent, I'm going out of my way to do something. I'd rather compete with somebody making 1,500 bucks an hour than 15 bucks. Okay, I think that's perfectly okay, and we have a way to get away from the nasty part of that. Uh, we're out of focus, folks. Yeah. Yeah.
That's it anyway, so <laughs> go ahead. So I come from Iceland and two years ago we, we did a big social experiment. We actually tried to crowdsource uh, our next constitution. We did it, you know, getting all kinds of people involved. You could, you know, suggest things. We, we were uh, randomly selected into a, a big uh, kind of event where, you know, people took different parts of the constitutions and tried to come up with a, a you know, a, a set of new things to focus on. Uh, that then, you know, we had a, a, a special council created to kind of come up with the final draft, and that got submitted to our parliament. And you know, you Google crowdsourcing constitution, you get all kinds of beautiful, beautiful news about it uh, that the international media covers. What none of them tell you is that in the last year and a half, nothing happened. Why? Because the politicians were influenced by lobbyists, not mm. by voters, to not make those changes. And you know, it, it was stopped by the ones who are not, you know, ones that always stop the important changes that need to happen, which is those that would lose money on this. Sure. So how do you think, you know, what you're doing, yes, it's great that I as a voter, you know, you know a voter can, can influence your senator, but do we really have a poll or does the, uh, you know, the, the, the paid lobbyist in, in DC really have the, the power to to always stop what we, the people, think is the right thing. They've always had the power, but they've never had the granular tools, we have never had the granular tools to assert our proxies, because we're the shareholders of the politician, not the customers. Businesses are the customers, lobbyists are the, you know, madams, and yeah. uh, as the shareholders, we haven't been using our proxy. Uh, by having pseudonymous constituent verification, and then aggregating those people, uh, that makes all the difference in the world. I got a quote on here from Barney Franks. I, I was in legislative bodies for 40 years. I have never seen a person who will go against his constituents because of money. But if they don't know about it, a million people marched against the Iraq war in 2003. No effect on the Hill. Why? They weren't wearing their constituent jackets. Mm. They didn't realize that all those people out there, and there was no direct way. We're simply doing, a set of workflows and use cases that I don't believe is any more complex than Amazon getting built. I mean, you look at Amazon, it's kind of miraculous when you look at all, I mean, got in PDF comes up when you want to return the thing, you know, and reviews and all this great stuff. But everything that happens inside there is a small technical triumph, you know, after they tried all the other things that didn't work, and, and these little technical affordances are all we need. And, and this, I believe, is easier to hack than the book selling business. Mm -hmm. We've got to end, so yeah, I'm going to yeah. tell people to talk to you separately because.